Assalamu alaikum, welcome to episode 9 of the Mind Heist podcast. In this episode, we talk about hardship, how you deal with it, different types of hardship and different ways we've found to kind of cope. So I hope you enjoy it, even though it's a bit of a negative topic. I uh, hope you enjoy it and I uh, hope you'll subscribe as well and listen to previous episodes if you have not already. Enjoy. Okay, bro. You know what, actually, I wanted to clarify something man it's been it's, how long has it been like two or three weeks since we recorded the last one i'm not sure let me see but yeah um, what are you clarifying yeah because uh i wanted to uh say you know in the islamophobia episode we did yeah. i think i said something about there's only like there's a muslim and then there's i think i i said it in a way where it sounded like there's only muslims and then people that hate islam right yeah so obviously that's not true and I think like someone told me that it sounded like I meant that or something so I just want to say like obviously that's not true like there are people who lean they're not Muslim right but they lean more towards for whatever reason they either have some kind of good feeling towards Islam or they yeah. just believe in general uh, generally in like defending people's rights or whatever it is yeah, yeah. so people are not equal obviously so uh, I don't know. I wanted to clarify that. And also, we I feel like I fully believe in what I said in the episode, but we were kind of one-sided in the sense where we didn't really talk about the people who maybe they they are they kind of are anxious going out every day because they they're scared of something happening. Yeah. And we didn't really touch on that. So, I just want to say like don't be a victim, but at the same time like obviously, you know, times is hard and all that. Of course, I suppose it's difficult because if we're talking about it from our perspective, and yeah, I mean, I don't know how much Islamophobia you're going to experience in the UAE now. <laughs> yeah, but probably not not that much. Yeah, but you know, we can only talk about what we're experiencing, and if I'm not experiencing a lot, then so yeah. be it, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, handler for alhamdulillah. safety and whatever. Okay, bro. Uh, is there anything else before we get into the this episode's topic? Uh, first of all, we should apologize for being so late. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm going to blame myself. It's probably my fault. But then again, it's just hard getting um, getting the time that we're both free. Because if yeah. you're in the UAE, I'm down here in the yeah. good old U of the K. <laughs> uh, it's it's a difficult thing to sort of organize. But we, we, we pull through. And the thing is, I think some time apart gives us the ability to come back fresh with new things to discuss inshallah yeah this the, uh, this week will show yeah. <laughs> yeah and on the topic of discussions what yeah. are we discussing today i mean so we said we were gonna discuss uh i guess like dealing with uh hardships in it yeah off the back of off the back of islamophobia and it's just a it's a it's actually a nice topic i don't know what you got in mind to say for the topic but it's i think it's a nice topic even though it's supposed to be negative i think it would be a, it's a good one i mean to get right into it mm. i wouldn't know i see i can imagine myself getting down or getting upset and stuff but yeah. you don't strike me as a person to get um like wound up and upset about things i'm not um, yeah that's that's what i think anyway yeah i'm definitely not in fact you know like uh being moody yeah I don't know if I've ever been moody. You don't strike me as someone who would be. But isn't it? I thought everyone, nearly everyone gets moody sometimes, but yeah. I don't think I get moody. But I, so part of it is just uh, how I am. Uh, I don't know whether it's, I mean, I doubt it's genetic. It's just how I was raised. Maybe it's something to do with being the middle child or something to do with that, right? Mm. Um, but then also, uh, I don't know, I kind of train myself as well. Um, but being a, an insensitive person in general it helps a lot <laughs> so yeah. oh man well you're gonna have to tell me a secret really tell us all your secret i mean what stops you from getting down no honestly bro it's like it's just allah allah made me like this isn't it <laughs> uh, <laughs> like uh inshallah i'll share some of the the ways i think about things but still like Come on, can't can't uh, put everything on myself. Um, yeah, what about I yourself? Guess, I don't know. I feel like um, 
um, I don't know. I get up and down, as you, as you do, as people do. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, I think being married has helped a lot because um, whenever I'm down, my wife will like sort of pick me up, and then vice versa. Like when she's down, it's mm. my job to sort. Of, and I don't think it's rare that we are either both. Yeah, it's rare that we're both like down together. You know, mm. I don't live in the really dream. Have, Living, living the, the dream. marriage dream. I know, right? It's a bit unfair <laughs> on everyone else, but, you know, it is part of the reason, isn't it? Part of the reason getting married is one of the many reasons. Yeah. So, so, can't blame me. I mean, I'm using it for its purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's actually a good point. Like, that's what it's for. Exactly. Um, would you say, Muhammad, that you've had a hard life, or how do you view it yourself, like, from your um, perspective? Oh God, um, not really. I don't. Although, mm. like, uh, as opposed to, you know, some people in my family thinking that I might have had a hard life, I don't yeah. really consider it. There are always hard things in people's lives, but I don't think yeah. I've dealt with stuff that other people deal with, and that, and that's just a good. Out- I think that's like the key to to probably not feeling so down. If I told you like my life story, then there might be some things that you'd pick out that that appear yeah. to you as oh that must have been really tough but everybody's got those you know yeah everybody's it's actually that. relative isn't it yeah of course of course and it's far i mean i think all of us are quite melodramatic anyway when we're teenagers and that as soon as yeah. i started practicing a lot of that kind of faded away in terms of feeling sorry for myself too much and why me kind of thing it's not really okay yeah i suppose as well that period in your life is actually um, training for the rest yep. of your life like you exactly. get mad feelings and emotions and thoughts during that period yeah and you learn to cope and uh, so then you're you're kind of better off into adulthood but for those that never learn in that age to cope they probably have a really hard time exactly. in like full adulthood yeah exactly i mean if without those experiences people don't tend to grow anyway so yeah. it's it all comes with it um so Go on. Would you say so? Would you say your your like teenage years was like the hardest time so far? Um, it's all a bit of a blur now. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, I think the hardest thing I ever had to deal with was um. Uh, God. We're getting specific. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it in public, but it's just it was like really bad, like um, uh, like almost clinical depression at one point um mm. uh, bro that's the key now we can do a mental health episode yeah. without people attacking us yeah i guess so yeah it was you're the, it was just... you're the token <laughs> depressed guy <laughs> i guess so no offense to anyone who actually does suffer from it on a continual basis i think for me it was it was weird because um you always assume that it's just a feeling of you know sadness or whatever Mm. And it doesn't, and you know, just get get out of it, get happy, whatever. Yeah. But it's it really is something completely different. It's very mm. strange. Um, mm. The best way I can describe it is like, um, you know, when they draw it and they always draw like a cloud above someone's head. Okay. It's yeah, li- yeah. It's it's literally like that. Like that's exactly how it feels. Okay. It just feels like. You wake up every day hoping that it's getting very deep very quickly. <laughs> you, you wake up every day hoping that it's not going to be there, but yeah. like within five minutes of waking up, it's there again, and it's just not. Mm. It's hard to explain. Um, but alhamdulillah, I'd say it only lasted for two, three months. Okay. Uh, yeah. But during that time, I was completely, um, like, completely out of it. I couldn't. Kind of handicapped in it. Exactly, I was disabled in the sense of like I couldn't go out. I couldn't yeah. go to. I stopped going to university. I stopped working. Anything like I just physically couldn't. Mm. Um, I can actually relate. You know, I mean, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if if everyone feels the same when they're depressed, right? I right. can't really. I don't know. I haven't looked into it, but I kind of get the feeling that I've gone through some kind of version of that. You know. Yeah. So I I do get it in a way, at least. Yeah. To the, to an extent, I mean, I I you know, it's not until I experienced that that I sort of started taking mental health quite seriously, um, mm. and now like in the line of work I'm in, I'm meeting people with all sorts of mental health issues, 
every mm. you know every week, and it just makes you take a really different glance on on um, people's situations and circumstances because it is easy to just say, "Oh, pull yourself out of it and get yourself together." Um, yeah, and, and obviously from a spiritual and a religious aspect, oh. um, people do you know sort of shrug it off as a oh just just pray or just do this or mm. without really considering it as a, a health issue. It's more of a feeling issue that you're just being you know wallowing in your sadness kind of thing. But mm. in contrast to that, um, I think yeah, Dean is probably the only thing that will. Well, apart from, you know, if you're prescribed anything or whatever, but Dean is really going to be your rope out of it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's... We're that's kind of making maybe. this into a mental health episode. Well, it's a hardship section. And the thing is, part of hardship is the feeling that it, it often gives you, isn't it? And yeah, the feeling like, of despair and the feeling of yeah. being able to cope. But you know what? What about the idea that, like, this is... I don't know if this is weird or not. Going through hardship and yeah. not feeling bad. Yeah, I mean that is you the know ultimate. What I mean? That is the ultimate goal, isn't it? To be tested, but to be patient with the test and not complain about it. I suppose. I don't know because I'm trying to think. Like some of the hardest, like uh, most challenging times in my life. Yeah, I can't say during that time I felt sad or uh, depressed or any of those kind of words. It, it, I wasn't feeling down. Yeah. I was feeling perhaps frustration. You know, yeah. rather than feeling down. So hardship isn't always a bit about being sad. You know, it's just about I don't know being exhausted or being frustrated as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I, that's kind of where I fit in more. Like in the harder times in my life, is just like, come on, like this again, like this yeah. kind of thing. Like yeah, trying to overcome challenges and stuff like that. Um, and you know, you're feel you feel like you're running out of stamina. Mm. Um, but, you know, I always tell myself, like, well, you got, like, two options. Like, you keep doing whatever this thing is that you're, you're being forced to do. Um, or you just stop and then you're probably going to have to go through it anyway. Like, mm. you know, there's a lot of things you can't escape. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, uh, for hardship probably has a kind of stereotypical idea pops up into people's heads. But many versions of it, well, not it's to true. mention... Not to mention, there are people, yeah, I truly believe this. I don't know what you, you believe. I was going to ask you this question. There are people who are so comfortable that it has become a hardship for them. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, can, I can definitely see that. So definitely that's my that. question for you. Do you think, is hardship relative or is it just final and objective? You know, can you say, you know, these people who are rich and this and that and they're kind of, comfortable can you just say look your hardship is not valid oh god uh i don't think so okay. i think um i think obviously hardship is going to be you know based on the individual and different people have different thresholds for what they can manage so, uh, you know and, and and you know if your hardship is an economic hardship and someone who's rich isn't going to have that hardship at all but they might <coughs> have something else going on generally they always do they always have something a lot more you know i mean there's i know it's just a classic example we got rich people with family problems poor people without or vice versa i don't know yeah um, no doubt. as far as um you know how to deal with it and how people deal with it it's really up to them isn't it it's really just down to their personalities and their upbringing um uh, and that's what made me think earlier about yourself because when we were when I was thinking about talking about this, I was thinking about how you would you know deal with certain things as as you as I mean, mm. I just I can't picture it in my head. I think different people are just different, you know. Yeah, you're <laughs> it's right. just, um, but I do think though, obviously, like my like YouTube channel, everything is kind of all about this in a way. It's about yeah. uh, it's about having a a, a helpful perspective on life yeah everything that comes yeah. at you in life the good and the bad is always having a the the best perspective on it right which is yeah, the islamic yeah. perspective so i do think um i don't i don't really agree with like oh it depends on your personality and uh, you just see how it goes i don't i don't really 
I don't encourage people to do to think of it that way per se. It's mm. true that people have different levels of resilience. I agree with you 100%. And that may, means that hardship is relative. It means yeah. you can look at someone and it looks like they got an easy life, um, but it's actually hard for them because they're soft. Like they're, yeah. they're, not, they're not resilient people, right? Um, so it is relative. Um, however, and each person will have a different personality and all of that, right? However, I do think there are tools and uh, different mindsets you can have towards obstacles in life that will mm. help you more or less. So let's say your hardship is like, I don't know, I'm just giving random numbers. Yeah, let's say 80. You're at the level of 80 hardship, whatever that is. Yeah. Mm. If you have these correct way of thinking about it, you could take that down to a 60. Yeah. Likewise, mm. if you're on hardship is 60 you could take it down to a 40 like mm. these things i do believe that always help you right um and th i think the number one the number one thing uh, i'm just <laughs> off the top of my head i'm making out what number one is but probably is gratitude you know mm. um like i always remember clearly tony robbins uh who's uh i don't know everyone knows him do you know him right yeah i've heard of him yeah, uh, Tony Robbins, he's like high performance coach, but he's also written a few books and he's got a ton of stuff on uh, YouTube and he's been in the game a long time in terms of personal development and uh, you could also say kind of a therapist kind of thing. But anyway, he says you cannot be sad and grateful at the same time. And I, I do believe that and I think that's very powerful. And so, yeah, like, for example, being grateful, would you could apply that to everyone. It doesn't yeah, matter what true. your personality is like. Like being grateful, um, you know, it will help you, no doubt. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's all about self like cultivation. And for me, I think um, no matter what trouble I had, and you know, this idea of tawakkul and reliance upon Allah, um, and you always rely that you always think that you know, no matter how bad things get, Allah will find a way to you know make it better for me mm -hmm. or or pull me out of this situation. And because that has worked. That has always happened to me. Yeah. Whatever trouble trouble I'm in, no matter how long it goes for, whether it's a year or a week, um, mm. there's always a way out. I find, mm. and th and that's happened so often that now it's put me in a position where when things do go wrong and there are troubles, I just automatically leave it to Allah anyway because I've cultivated that over a long time. Yeah. So that's a you perspective, know? isn't it? Yeah. It's just that uh, if you don't have it, it's hard to cultivate that perspective right but now you're yeah. saying it's kind of automatic pretty much yeah yeah so so it, it does take a little bit maybe of work or how, how did you get to that level well like i said it's um it's through loads of things happening throughout my life like so, so many things that you know theoretically go wrong yeah that um you just have to be patient you've got no choice but to be patient mm. then you know ways out come about and you right. you know you that just sort of teaches you it teaches you that actually no matter how bad things get there's always going to be something that pulls you out of it and no yeah. matter and, and i think it, at first you also need to have that belief in the first place i don't think people tend to well law alam but if you don't have that mentality that allah is going to pull you out of it mm. then you might be stuck in that position you know yeah. it's yeah. it's good to think good of allah and to think you know and to believe that allah is capable of all things without that belief um yeah, not only do you put yourself in a rut, but yeah. I don't know, Wallahu alam, but I don't know how destiny will manifest itself without that kind of belief in Allah in the first place, you know? Yeah, no doubt. So so you're saying basically that your life experience taught you that just trust in Allah, it does exactly. get better at some point. It does get better, exactly, mm, exactly. Okay. And, you know, it's part of that reliance structure. I mean, yeah, that yeah. is what our deen is about. And yeah. you hear about, you know, you read about the seer of the Prophet, Sallallahu you read sorry. about... Um, you know everything that happens to the Sahaba, etc., all the mm. prophets beforehand, yeah. and you know the stuff they went through was crazy, and they, they, you know because because of their trust and belief in Allah, they they were pulled out of it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that actually reminds me of this framework. I think I actually got it also from Tony Robbins. It's like how do you get to achieving something? Yeah, the the desired action, and there are like four stages he mapped out. And believe it or not, like the first stage was certainty. So certainty that you can or that you will do that action. Yeah? yeah. So like before you've even got confidence that you can do it, before you've even got some kind of proven experience that you you can do it, 
first before any of that or even knowledge of how to do it yeah. first you start with the certainty right which really in our case obviously as humans we can't be 100% certain of what we can do because Allah will decree if we can or can't do stuff yeah but we can be certain of what Allah has told us about himself isn't it exactly good 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 point oh I never thought about that good point <laughs> so if Allah's telling you I don't know um, that well uh, yeah yeah that the, the best outcome is for the the people with taqwa yeah if if Allah told you that and it's the truth obviously then that means you got when you're in the hardship yeah you got to think look if i have taqwa if i tr work to increase my taqwa allah is saying that the best outcome is for me yeah right? so you yeah. get that certainty isn't it of and uh, you, you mentioned a good uh, i think you kind of touched on the the hadith uh, uh, the hadith qudsi um where allah said ana inda dhann abdi bi i am as my slave expects me to be or or thinks of me mm. so if you think positive of positively of allah and by the way uh, this hadith i can definitely say without exaggeration that it changed my life um yeah when i when i look really yeah yeah when i learned it i was just like it kind of mixed with this whole certainty thing i was talking about and yeah. it was just it was just like um i'll give you a real life kind of case study yeah so i was doing my master's degree and i was um I finished the actual degree and that was like dissertation part, yeah? Hmm. By that point, I was just exhausted. I was very unmotiv lacking motivation and uh, I was actually feeling very unconfident about my ability to do this flipping dissertation, yeah? Yeah. Um, and honestly, wallahi, yeah, the only thing that allowed me to complete this was that from the day one, when I was feeling the worst, you could say, I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, there's no doubt I'm going to do it. And I expected that Allah will help me through this, yeah? And I carried that on non-stop, yeah? Like, month one goes past, I've done no work, yeah? Month two goes past, I've done no work. But for those 60 days, I carried this certainty that this will get done. Even if there's, like, one week left to do it, it will get done, you know? And yeah. that carried me through, subhanAllah. I don't know, it was crazy. But um, I've seen this expectation good expectation of allah um manifest itself with me and with people around me like in crazy ways um and there are actually multiple hadith about this about uh, i think there's another one where prophet ﷺ said in the clearest tra closest translation that don't die without having a good expectation or good thoughts of allah you know mm. um it's so powerful man do, do you have a kind of story around this hadith Oh, um, I think I always, I always keep, have it as a perspective of, um, you know, when you, you know your sins will be forgiven because Allah is the most merciful, and if you're doubting Allah's mercy, then you're not really mm, so. thinking of that hadith. So, so maybe it, you know people when they are experiencing hardships, um, they can you know they can look at it two ways. Maybe it's because they're you know sinned or maybe they've done something bad and this is sort of their punishment for it or maybe you know Allah's forsaken them because you know they, they just assume that they're bad people um mm. and they don't like to they don't think they could ever be forgiven and they don't you know not realizing that Allah is there to forgive you know yeah um so having a bad opinion let me think uh or having a good opinion though, rather I don't know. I mean, I I always yeah, like I said, I always keep it in the mind of sins and and forgiveness and right. And so like afterlife. when you've sinned and you feel like it's so bad, you're like, yeah. if I if I turn to Allah and I repent, like Allah wouldn't do it to me. Allah wouldn't just ignore my repentance. Mm -hmm. But then it's also it's a fine line as well because you don't want to get carried away with that hadith and then yeah, you can't like everything's put fine. Yeah, you can't, what's the word, uh, like push it on Allah to do what you're expecting. But, yeah. but since since Allah says that, like, like turn to me and I'll forgive you, yeah. then it, it is a promise from Allah, Yani. Yeah, it's just all about sincerity, isn't it? Because you have yeah. to sincerely turn, you can't just half... Yeah, you half can't half like play it. the game, basically. You can't game the system, Yani. Exactly. exactly. And uh, 
another perspective on on life you know that islam gives us walillahi alhamd is like i don't know about you but I, I somehow i always had this idea that life is hard like it just is hard mm. i never had an expectation of life being easy you know and i've seen people who they had that world view where life can be really great and perfect and they were just disappointed again and again and i guess yeah. the dunya kind of beats that into you in it like no yeah. like dunya is not gonna be great <laughs> well that's the thing i mean people are i don't know about muslims or but people are generally so angered by anything that goes wrong in life like mm. really angered like it shouldn't happen to the yeah. point where you know death is such a problem mm, to people so. that there is a you know there's such a pronounced dramatic drama dramatization of death and mm, and so. uh, you know romanticizing life and uh, just complete outrage at anything you know whether it's a disease or an illness or a catastrophe and you know yeah. i've been getting that lately because i've been doing a little bit of Dow on the side and i'll get people come in and saying um uh you know why do bad things happen can you explain this can you explain that and yeah. you know you tell them the answer really and truthfully and it doesn't satisfy them it doesn't satisfy their nerves the answer being that this uh, this world isn't perfect you know and then they'll always throw that question of oh if if god knows everything then why does god let bad things happen mm. you know but mm. But the point the point is this life isn't all that it is you know when when good innocent people die for example yeah then that death isn't the end of every you know their entire existence this is just merely a crossing to somewhere else and you know who knows maybe the place they're going to is better than this one here no you doubt yeah. but they don't want to think like that because they're so fixated and invested in this that it just it doesn't make yeah. sense to them you know I guess yeah like subconsciously if you don't believe in an in an afterlife yeah you, you're kind of limited to your 60 70 80 years on on this planet so it's like i guess yeah you, you really be frustrated if that's all it was mm. and mm. then and then like you know life is hard and um you know some some really tragic things happen really isn't it it's like oh, of course people i don't know like I, I actually subhanallah this is nuts yeah I ended up on a Reddit, uh, what are they called? Is it a thread, yeah? Yeah. I was on a Reddit thread and it was like stories of like people you've seen ruin their life quickly. Yeah. Right? And it was these mad stories of how, oh, my friend was like accepted into Harvard and he was like got a scholarship and he was like just going to start in a month or whatever. And one time he was drunk and he fell into a, a a puddle thing and he drowned. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, like, and subhanAllah, it is nuts. Like, I, I could say probably 70% of these stories were alcohol related. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like people that were, basically they, they had everything going for them in life and then boom, something happens, they die or they lose a leg or, you know, sometimes people seem like they really don't deserve it and then they get it. Like they get, they get hard, you know, like mm. they they lose their legs or whatever, you know. Mm. And if you see that and you don't have an akhirah perspective, you'd be just like, I don't know how you deal with it, really. Yeah, I was thinking about this today, actually, about because um, you've just said, um, you know, at first glance, you think that they don't deserve it. Mm. Um, and obviously today's Friday and, we, you know, we're all meant to read Surah al yeah. And there's just obviously that, that you know, uh, story of Musa alayhi salam with uh, Dhul Khidr yeah. I believe Khidr, and, yeah. yeah and was it just Khidr isn't it and yeah. um, what's the word and obviously you know it, it's literally that it's literally the scenario that we're talking about of bad things happening yeah and you but, don't know, you know the good behind and Musa, it yeah Musa alayhi salam has no idea of what the good is behind it yeah. and Khidr is a bit more you know clued up onto why these things are happening or why these things are being done yeah. um, to the point of like you know the death of a child yeah. uh, and and at first glance you read that and you think wow uh, that's kind of dark but mm. really and truthfully you know theoretically from my understanding that child is still you know before the age of puberty he dies and he goes somewhere better you yeah. know 
and the kids that replace him, so to speak, they're also going to be good children. So that way, actually, everybody's a winner because the child never grew up to be a bad person that is then yeah. sent to hell, you know. And so I know that's just a, a side point, but it is it is literally that you don't know, and <laughs> bro, it is bro, difficult. It's not even a side point, bro, because that story is a really good example of Allah teaching us. Yeah. How to deal with like hardship and how to deal with stuff that we consider bad. Yeah. That is always about training us. Always. Like there's always a million and I say it to my wife all the time because you know, we'll go through things as a as a you know, a couple or whatever or uh you know, things that are like roadblocks during our development or yeah. um I don't know, things to do with rent or whatever, you know, things yeah. that married people go through. And um you you know sometimes you fixate on a goal that you really want to achieve and it doesn't work out and you do literally just say to each other there's probably a thousand reasons why this didn't happen and let's just sit down and think of them now you know yeah. and i'll do that i will sit there and i will think well actually if this happened that maybe this would have happened maybe this would have happened. and i would have mm. justified why things didn't happen just for my own peace of mind because that way i can sort of um that way i can sort of uh, accept allah's decree and yeah. and and convince myself that actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching out for me because the road you know the road ahead is a dangerous one and I might not have known yeah yeah and that's actually I think that's a sick exercise that I've probably done like just in my head but yeah. it would be good to probably do with other people as well like it's so sick because that is how you know you want to train yourself to react to stuff isn't it mm -hmm. it's like because this happened right because I'm a Muslim I'm, I'm trying to you know worship my creator yeah and yeah. this happened because Allah decreed that to happen it means khalas is good in it maybe yeah, it's, it's not good in the dunya even but in the in the akhirah is good maybe something else as well in the dunya is going to be good out of it and it's like because Allah decreed it it's good right? yeah exactly but but I do think you need to do stuff like what you mentioned uh, those that kind of exercise but also I do believe it's like an iman thing because when my iman's been higher I deal with hardship much better than otherwise, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, the, the kind of how do you develop your Iman? Like, uh, from my experience, it would be gaining knowledge of Allah. Mm. Um, knowledge of Allah, knowledge of uh, the Prophet, um, and the pro stories of the Prophets in general, you know, because there's a lot mm. of hardship in them and stuff. Surah to Yusuf is a really good one. Um, you know, I think that that's a really good way of developing these kind of habits. Like, you know, when something bad happens, you you, you automatically go to, oh, Allah decreed it, so it's good. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I think my, in all honesty, assessing myself, I mm. think my hardest, hardest thing to do is have high iman when things are going really well. I think if anything brings me close to Allah, it's a hardship. Always. Yeah, so. and and you know sometimes um, it, it's it's amazing really. Sometimes you just you just get too caught up in things going well, and the worst thing happens, and it's like Alhamdulillah that that work, that bad thing has really just you know brought me back down to earth and really. <laughs> swear down, well, yeah. I love him, and it's the it's the quickest. I mean, I can I can literally try like I can try and 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 you know. I wouldn't say artificially, but you know, try and increase my iman by performing good, you know, good deeds and listening to something that's beneficial and reading something beneficial. But yeah. nothing seems to do the trick like a hard time does. Yeah, that's Honestly. true, Allah. It's Honestly. true. That, that's my experience as well. And that like... was it. And that's it. Sorry, that was yeah. it. Like the, you know, when I was saying earlier, I always have to try and figure out why bad things are happening. Like yeah. when I cannot figure it out, when I can't justify why this bad thing has happened to me, I will mm. always say, "Well, you know what? It's happened to me because Allah wanted to increase my iman." Mm. And that's it. Yeah. That's what I'll put it down to. And then that's what will happen in turn. Mm. Actually, that reminds me. I asked a scholar about. You know, if uh, I think it was if uh, sins, if our sins cause hardship to us in in the dunya, yeah. then how how come the Sahaba and the prophets were tested so much? Yeah, right. He said, when when hardship comes to you, you should assume it's because of your sins. Yeah. Mm. So like, and he gave the example of Aisha when she, what was it, man? Oh, she had a headache. 
Mm. She had a headache and she said, uh, this is because of something I did wrong, you know. Yeah. That she so that was her first reaction. However, that, and that's because out of humility we should say that. And that's what we should believe and it should cause us to uh, reduce our sins, right? However, Allah will select people to put them through hardship to purify them of sins or to elevate their ranks because when you go through hardship with sabr, your rank in Jannah will be elevated. And mm. this is basically the example of the, the prophets and the sahaba that they went through so much hardship and it elevated them because they reacted in the best way. But as for us people, we could assume that it's, you know, it's Allah uh, purifying us of sins or, uh, you know, it's because of a sin we've done. So Allah is helping us to purify it and to humble our, us and all of that. Um, but you never know as well. Maybe Allah wants to elevate us, but we can't really know that, you know. Yeah, I think it's always good to have that, you know, middle ground. Never mm. think too highly of yourself and never think too low as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think it's not. difficult. This topic is a difficult one for us because... Well, actually, it's not really because I was just thinking like with time and with the correct sort of cultivation, you will get to a period where you can... Um, you know really handle a lot of bad things thrown at you it's not that it doesn't upset you it's just you just know and understand and, and navigate yourself a bit better in dealing with it yeah isn't it? yeah um, i mean you can't i can't say this about myself but it's like uh you know the there is a there's a kind of a status or a level that you reach uh which uh, they call a river you know mm. and that that is like whatever happens uh, good or bad or you're just happy with it because Allah yeah. decreed it yeah mm. that's like the goal obviously very few people reach this this level where your your child could die and you just like accept it you're just like you yeah. no no it's not actually accept because that's a level below Rida is you're happy with it yeah yeah so something mad could happen to you but you're happy with it because you understand that Allah decreed it and you're happy with Allah's decree Mm. And that is like obviously the aim. That's the object, the, the goal to try and get there. But it's very hard to get there. But people do reach that, you know. I think that's always my subconscious fear. Of <laughs> my subconscious fear is being very um, like accepting of things that happen to me. So much so to the point where Allah tests me with even harder things. <laughs> and I worry that you know because I think about it like this. Like at the moment, yeah, these are all first world problems, and I'm sitting here in the first world. Mm. sort of enjoying my cup of tea while things go wrong around me and yeah. then you just you know glance over world news and just the most awful things that are happening to muslims around the world yeah. and you just think god like i can sit here and talk about this you know hardship etc but mm. i cannot put myself in a position that they put themselves in wallahu alam like i don't know and i'm sure you wouldn't know how you would react in like you know situations where your you know entire family have been killed or you know Subhanallah, and you just don't know what you you know what you're capable of in those situations. Um, sure. But at the same time, I don't want to. I don't want to experience that. I don't want to put myself in that position because you don't know what test you're going to fail. You know. Yeah, it's absolutely normal <laughs> to want to avoid those tests. You know, even if the thing is like, you know, we're going to run away from hardship in life. It's normal. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Um, but when it does hit you, because you can't run away from it, isn't it? When it hits you, it's like you got to be a bit prepared and you got to kind of just deal with it, isn't it? Yeah. So just how, I mean, look, you think about Syria, yeah? Those people in Syria, a lot of them were living pretty comfortable, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then this hit them out of nowhere. Like, yeah. this is the crazy thing because some countries have a lot of poverty and then things get bad, whether it's a civil war or whatever, yeah? Right. But Syria is like, there was a big middle class in Syria. Yeah, Imagine like yeah. they're people that are like you and me in terms of their resilience. Maybe they are similar to you and me and they get hit with this. So yeah. subhanAllah is a very, very tough one, man. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I you guess, have to. Yeah. I, I mean, there comes a time where you really haven't got a choice because you have to position yourself as, depending on what your standing is in your family. If you're like, you know, if you're a husband or a father or you know, the leader of a family, you sort of have to pick up the pieces for everyone else. Otherwise, yeah, the family falls apart without you, you know? I yeah. don't know. Now that I have, a, you know, my boy in that, I don't know. 
I don't think I can handle my boys seeing me upset or seeing me not have it like hold it together because yeah. it just doesn't make sense for him. You know, you can imagine though the pressure building up where oh, yeah. you're not allowing yourself to be weak, right, for others. Yeah until your head just wants to split but yeah the thing is it's like i think it was abu hanifa he said his son asked him like when's all the hardship gonna end and stuff you know yeah. this is this is nuts and he said you know in the with the first step into jannah inshallah oh. so it's like i guess he saw life like that you know it's like it's a struggle but it's you know it's pretty short and you just He's got to make it to the finish line, which is Jannah. Like, death isn't the finish line. Like, as long as you make it there, you know, like, like I think it's in a hadith about the, the people who, who suffered the most in the dunya and they enter Jannah, they forget all of that straight away. Yeah. So, well, it's true. It's true. And, 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 and going back to, you know, sort of the point we made earlier, it is so easy to forget when things are going well. It really mm. is. It's so easy to just sort of not necessarily sin. I mean, yeah, it is easier. To, it's much easier to sin when you're when things are going well. Mm. But it's also just easier to forget about, you know, the akhirah and to forget about what you're destined for. Yeah, you know. Sure. I mean, I don't go too long without thinking about death and things like that. But I remember this week, this past week, mm. it didn't really cross my mind as much as it usually does. Okay. And it wasn't until today that I was like. Oh my god, I, I went like a whole week without thinking of death. And if I died during that week, imagine how that would have been. In other you words, Achi Tweet was living the life. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Not at all. No, but like I, I went through, a, you know, what's the most recent hardship? I think it was just work, you know, trying to find work and trying to deal with, um, you the know, process. E yeah, the process and economic problems. That was like the most recent heavy hardship I went through. Mm. Um, but now that I'm in it and I'm sort of it's going well, mm. it's like that sort of ease. But then it started tipping a bit slightly to maybe a bit too much ease. Yeah, you know? yeah I get you. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it's at that point where you think because there's always a there's always should be a thought in your head every now and again. No, I could die at any moment. I could die in any day. I could die at any point. You yeah. know, that should always be there. And you should always try and refresh that. I think. But like yeah. that week that goes by, it's like when you drive. You know, when you're driving. And mm. you, you're, you know, you're going. Let's say I know you go to Dubai quite often, right? I don't know how yeah. long that journey is. You go into Dubai hour and, and an hour and a half journey, perfect. And you drive all the way to Dubai. You get to Dubai and you don't remember your journey at all because you just weren't paying attention to the road. Yeah, you know, and it's a bit like that. Like you're literally living life, and at any point in that journey, it could just drop off. But you have not thought about the road at all, or your process in driving, or your, yeah, you know, just autopilot. Basically. It's auto, yeah, exactly. You're just in autopilot, and that's what it is. And I went through a week of autopilot, and then mm. thought, oh my god, I could have just anything could happen to me. Mm. I, I was not prepared. I haven't been preparing mentally, spiritually, whatever. No, 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 no. I need to fix that. That's not right. You know? Yeah, that, that's a good point. So that kind of is what people mean when they say be in the moment or like live in the present yeah. meaning be aware of what you're doing don't be autopilot be aware yeah. of it and when yeah. you're aware you're going to be thinking of death you're going to be thinking like it's actually that's probably the number one thing that will make you live in the moment is thinking mm. of death really isn't it yeah and I'd, I'd, I'd add on to that is I mean I'm, I'm going to say this but it's not something that I'm necessarily doing actively because I need to do it but I think mm. we as people should try and develop more khushur in our prayers as well and I say mm. that today because today I was praying yeah. and I got really angry in my prayer at myself <laughs> because at one point, I uh, can't remember what it, how the thought went. Either way, something about my bank account crossed my mind. Okay. In, you no, know, well, well, I'm being honest because I think it's a, something we can benefit from. Yeah. I, it was, I think it was Jumu'ah Salat and, you know, I'm paying attention to the surah, etc. And there's something about my bank account or my money in my bank or something happened. Mm. I can't remember. I was thinking about the other day. Um, I think I was trying to organize my my money, etc. And it just crossed my mind for like a good two, two, two to ten seconds, yeah? Yeah. And I then got really angry with myself, like, whoa 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 this is exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> like mm. it's about being on autopilot and not necessarily focusing on what i should be focusing on right now or reminding Sorry. myself of what i should be reminding myself Sorry. um and i think it does get harder as you get you know more responsibilities on you but it's true man 
it's important to just sort of and I, I was really angry because I was like I'm thinking I'm here in this prayer thinking about you know risk when really it's not going to come from any sort of organizing that I do is going to come from Allah and I should be here focusing on Allah not on what I'm going to do to make my life better kind of thing yeah definitely you know? man and uh, that's 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 like uh, life in it like there's fitness in life and mm. Allah mentions some of them specifically being your your spouse your children your wealth mm. you know it's like I'm just uh, thinking of the the surah uh, surah al-munafiqun right at the end right I've got it here Ya ayyul ladina amanu Ah, oh, here it is. Yeah. لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله وما يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون. You know, so don't let your money and your kids distract you from the dhikr of Allah. Mm. Whoever does that will is is from the the big losers. You know, and mm. that's so that's so real. Really, it's like kids are a blessing from Allah. They're rizq from Allah. Um, and you could get many rewards through them. Equally, though, if they cause you to turn away from Allah, then they're the fitna for you. You know, they're you know it's bad news kind of thing. So it's a big balancing act. And you know, you're talking about things getting too easy. You know, I kind of got this weird thing last few years where when things are easy, can you hear the adhan? That's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> should I close the window because it's gonna be proper loud? It's all right. Okay. It's all right. It, it adds some flavor to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got this thing where I think of hardship. Like if I'm if I'm in an easy phase, I, I think of life in like phases, easy and hard phase. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if I'm in the easy phase, I recognize it's easy, and then I'm kind of waiting for the hardship to come. Yeah. Like I kind of just I expect fully that life will not be like this, and I don't think most people think like they think. Okay, I don't know, you graduate uni, you get a job, you kind of just expect, okay, you're going to go up in your career, you're going to get yeah. married, you're going to get kids, uh, your kids are going to do, you know, go through school, do okay, um, you're going to be earning more money, maybe you could buy a house, and it's, they, th they think of it like progressively just getting better and better and better kind of thing, yeah, yeah. and then maybe you get older, maybe it's not as good then, but, but really I just see it as cycles, like, Good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. Yeah, you know, that's that's the way it's got to be. The way you got to look at it, because it, it helps. It helps humble you when things are going good, and it helps uplift you when things are already going bad. Yeah, and I just kind of, I just see myself as like the property of Allah, and it like Allah can do what He likes with me, and it's not like I'm entitled to a happy life or whatever kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I understand like people find that crazy for me to say but it is true in the end and that's that's the um definition of of servitude or or ubudiyya, you know yeah. uh, to to allah is that you are owned by him you know and the the, the owner of the slave um you, the slave isn't entitled to anything from the owner like he owns you you know yeah of course so that's another kind of perspective that you know life is a test life will get hard and also, like, Allah could do what he likes with you. But Allah is very generous and kind and soft with his slaves. So mm. he does very little to us compared to what he do could do. And also, what he does to us is, like, pushing us towards Jannah as well. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. That's the way you got to look at it. Ooh. Well, how, is, how long have you got to... Do you have to go to the masjid now? Is that what's going on? You've got 20 minutes until so long. 20 minutes subhanallah al-azim mashallah tabarakallah bro i wanted to do you have any kind of because you mentioned that pretty good exercise about about like uh thinking the reasons the alternative reasons why something happened right yeah what what else do you have anything else um i'll just uh, leave like one maybe you don't have it off the top of your head think about that i'll just mention a couple of books that yeah. helped me one I read when I was very young, I must have been like 14, I read uh, Don't Be Sad, La Tahazan, by, uh, is it Aid al Qarni? I can't remember the, the author. Okay, and then the other one uh, is by, uh, I believe, uh, Al Imam Ibn al Qayyim. Mm. Uh, 
there are, there's a long version and there's a short and like a summary kind of version and there is translation of it basically it's called if you just search ibn al qayyim uh, uh patience and gratitude hmm. this is a magical book this is an amazing book the translation is a bit uh robotic but honestly if you want to benefit from it you're gonna benefit a lot from it you know it's talking about different types of patience uh how to be grateful how to be patient is mad is very good book and i think the summary is translated i'm not sure about the longer version obviously arabic would be better and i should try and read that actually in arabic um and then there's an one more book obviously the quran like i don't want to just say the quran oh i have to say quran no like i would say that's actually the number one if you understand it at least um it's like the number one thing that will keep you grounded and remind mm. you that you know mm. life is temporary even if things are bad in life like it's not that bad because it could be bad in the akhirah and that's much much mm. worse stuff like that and then finally there's a good book about kind of uh way uh mental models you know frameworks for thinking you know and putting stuff into perspective it's called stop thinking and start living mm. and when i read this book i found it very islamic even though it's not written by a muslim Mm. I found that it's uh it is is it, it's, it's like pretty much easy to digest ways of seeing things and if you if you're muslim you'll understand how it connects to islam anyway so those are some really good uh, resources I got apart from um the one we already mentioned about you know sort of creating a mental list of things mm. um i think cuz that works so effectively for me that i generally don't do anything else but what I will say, I don't know if she'll like me saying this, but my wife sometimes does get upset, which is fine. She gets upset about whatever. Yeah. And I do a little tactical, uh, because we pray most of our prayers together anyway, unless I'm on, you know, on my, my own or in the meshid. Yeah. Um, and like, I don't know, she could be upset and then it's us of time or whatever. No, mm. Maghrib time, for example. And, uh, I will always, and I don't even think she's noticed, I don't know if she's noticed, but I will always recite Surah Al-Duha if she's upset. Okay. And, and, it, and because, and in all honesty, it's something that I believe that really is um, such a powerful, because it's short and it's quick to understand, yeah. and it's such a powerful surah in regards to hardships mm. and in regards to, you know, not feeling forsaken by Allah and, and relying and to echo on Allah, so, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, uh, that was actually revealed in during the uh, Aam al Hazan, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So the hardest time in the Prophet's life, that was re revealed to him to help him with it. So yeah, and, and it carries on, it carries on. And, and I will recite it as, you know, best I can. And it sort of does the job. And really, it just makes me think as well. And... It is it is so powerful, and I do advise anyone to sort of read it, but not just you know read it and you know sort of I don't know reflect it's, on it, it basically yeah d definitely try and reflect on it and, even outside and, of Salah like read the translation and just think of it isn't it basically yeah it's sure it's not you know if you don't if you haven't memorized it then please try and it's it's just it really is like a key to trying mm. to cultivate and develop that mindset that yeah. actually things are fine and things will be fine and you're mm. not alone kind of thing mm. yeah uh, other surahs like definitely surah to yusuf surah mm. to yusuf is is the very very big one mm. um and then i don't know exactly which surah it is but the story of ayub because mm. that's that's full of hardship as well but mainly surah to yusuf um just so much hardship and when you try and when you read it and you're trying to empathize with like Yaqub, for example, I said, um, it's like it really puts you in there, and it's just try and think of how it must have felt, um, and at the same time, uh, you know that that famous ayah where he says, you know, uh, I'd, uh, what's it called? Innahu la yaasu min rohi Allahi illa al qawm al kafirun or kafirin. Um, so you know he, he basically his son was taken this and this and he didn't lose hope this is the this is the big point basically that he's mm. saying that if you lose hope that's only what the the kafirun do yeah he said all these years where his son was gone he kept hope that yusuf was out there yeah right and then when he found that he was still alive and everything then he, that, that's what he said you know 
And so it's kind of this uh, overjoying kind of feeling when, when you read that part of it. Um, so definitely that that's a good one as well. And um, I don't know, uh, uh, Muhammad, do you have... Because obviously when, you, when it comes to pondering on the Qur'an, you've you got to know Arabic. Otherwise you might want a... Uh, tafsir. I don't. Yeah. I don't know any tafsir in English other than Ibn Kathir, and Ibn Kathir is a bit difficult, I think, to read even in Arabic. Like, yeah. it, it's very detailed and long. Do you know of any English ones otherwise? Oh, not really. At the moment, I'm just going through tafsir Ibn Kathir, but I don't know. I guess I I sort of forced myself to learn a lot of the Arabic because obviously I have you know a, a, some background in Arabic anyway mm. uh, I just sort of forced forced that until I you know I'd, I'd like to think I you know know about 70% of the meanings of what I'm reading you know yeah. there's only a, phrases here and there that I won't understand and I'll go back to and it sort of makes sense um, but yeah I think I'm not the right person to ask really mm. okay because I, I discovered um, a couple of, of, of tafsir which were really good in Arabic in terms of not being too not going too deep because sometimes like I, I was like okay I need to I want to read tafsir in Arabic okay it's going to be way better in Arabic so yeah. then I was like okay Ibn Kathir I know Ibn Kathir so I pick up Ibn Kathir bro the guy mashallah he goes through like one word in one page yeah. okay <laughs> so I can't, that's not really what I was looking for you know and yeah. even I, I've I've heard that like Ibn Kathir is not really recommended for uh, your kind of average Muslim. It's more like for scholars or if you want to yeah. really go deep into something, yeah? Because yeah. he, he puts everything there. I but then I, right. I, yeah. I came across uh, Tafsir uh, Sa'di, um, who uh, he was the teacher of, uh, what's his name? Uh, come on, man. Saudi. He's died and he's dead now. Allah uh, Yerhamu. Uh, that's it oh okay so uh, he was his teacher and he's got a very nice simple tafsir in yeah. Arabic it's not too in depth and it's not too simple it's really good and there's another one called Al uh, Muyassir I don't know who wrote it but again that's uh, maybe a little bit more simple than, than a Saudi's one yeah I think you're the, right because the, I heard um, I think someone asked Sheikh Saleh Vozan I believe I could be wrong hmm. and they asked him, you know, what's the best tafsir to learn from for a beginner? And because Ibn Kathir is so, you know, well known, and so is uh, like tafsir yeah. Imam Ibn uh, Imam Tabari, for example, I thought that he would mention one of those because yeah. they're so f popular. But no, they were like quite low on the list in terms of accessibility, according to him. I can't yeah, remember Tabari what the ones he mentioned. Of a one as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I might have seen actually that clip. I think he do, he mentions a Saudi as well. Yeah, so that possibly is why then. But what's also very interesting is when this is a bit a bit out of the topic. But when you're reading the tafsir, think of the context in which it was written. You know, because the yeah. Saudi wasn't around; like he was around just a few decades ago. So he yeah. was in a certain world. You know, when he was writing that. Anyway, it's very the tafsir is is really good. I think it's really useful in terms of pondering over the Quran and using the Quran to overcome your hardships or to reframe your hardships. Really. Because uh, perspective is everything, and that's most. That's kind of the summary of what we've been saying in this episode: is um, reframe, like the way you see things, uh, will affect how it affects you, basically, isn't it? Mm, definitely, uh, bro. Okay, let's wrap it up, inshallah. Um, I don't think we got any recent emails because we were kind of silent for a while. Oh yeah, I was just going through them now. Let me see. Are there any uh, recent ones? Oh. Uh, We've got one here. I don't think I ever read it. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Akhi. This is from, oh, initials AT. <laughs> okay. All right, from, I've got it open now. Let me read yeah. it. Yeah. First, I'd like to congratulate you, Akhi, for the new baby. Me and my wife is expecting our second son this April. Alhamdulillah. But the question I have to you is, how do you manage free time to yourself and time for your wife? I like to play video games and be on social media, but lately my wife hasn't been in the best of moods about it. <laughs> I, fear, I fear it will get worse. So what is your humble opinion? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Akhi, this is the worst thing to ask me because I am exactly in your boat. I am exactly <laughs> the same. Is my wife in the best moods about it? Probably not. No. <laughs> I think you just have to put your hands up sometimes and just take the L, so to speak, and 
really just like <laughs> you know my wife's not with me at the moment I, I just I left her in London with her in-laws yesterday so I'm like oh I've got a week of things to do for myself like of my social media and games yeah oh bro I can't even do it even when they're not here because I just feel guilty okay but no, good no, then. No. I don't know I don't know I, it depends on your you know this, you know how your family's structured if you're both working it's difficult if only one of you is working it's difficult <laughs> you know it's, it's it, it is what it is I mean when you have a kid as well it's like I mean I'm in a position now where my wife's not working and I am hmm. so she sort of takes control of all the baby stuff and I do, you know, I do the typical put the food on the table kind of thing. Mm. Um, and there isn't much debate about that. It was, it's when she was working that we probably had the most struggles because, you know, we're both working pretty much full time and mm. trying to, I don't know, I come home assuming because I'm very, what's the best way of putting this without offending feminists? I am very old school. <laughs> In my understanding of you know family roles and, and, and structures, you it's know. called being normal, bro. It's <laughs> it's not old school. It's what? normal, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the way. And no, and let, let's just say that that's the way she believes things are as well. You know, that's the family that she comes from. And that's the background that she comes from. But yeah. when she was working as well, mm. it it suddenly became apparent that that we were clashing a lot because my expectation is things are going to be done by her, yeah. which she physically can't do. And then she'll ask me for, you know, assistance, which mm. I might physically not be able to do because I'm also tied up, you know. Mm. And then it sort of, you know, you butt heads and that. And then, well, honestly, then, then, you know, I don't know the, the brother if what his family structure is like. But if you can get yourself in a position where only one person's doing one thing, you know, like, because I do believe, I strongly believe that that way of doing things like you know the house is sort of the woman's jurisdiction and the the outside world is sort of where the man sort of brings them the meal home kind of thing mm. i believe that that is the pre you know the what's the word the natural disposition of how a couple should be yeah That's so how does that help with social media and playing video games as far as <sighs> oh so you're basically you're saying the man's job is to play games and, and uh, <laughs> no, the, as far as that I was going on to that as far as social media um, I don't think it's I don't know because when I got what married, about I this thought, bro what about this I'll give this suggestion and you tell me go if on. it's realistic or not go on then yeah don't play so don't play video games or go on social media except for say one hour in the day so set an hour in the day where you could do whatever the flip you want but for the rest of the time you need to be like uh you know t like taking care of your stuff like whatever it is you know taking care helping with the baby do whatever your stuff is oh and but like you are you are every woman's dream boat you are well like well, he's saying his wife's having a hard time. <laughs> if yeah, if his wife's having a hard time, then you're going to have to adjust to what your wife, you know, what your wife's expectations. It's are. normal. Before I got married, uh, yeah. Before I got married, hmm. uh, well, before not even that. Before my wife moved in, hmm. I um, I did make it known that this is these are the habits I have, and you're yeah. going to have to you might have to put up with it, you know. But bro, <laughs> isn't it excessive to spend more than an hour in a day? doing stuff which frankly is a bit of a waste of time oh yeah i will agree with you but i'm also a victim of it at the same time yeah but so. is that a realistic thing to expect from someone like it, would that it be all, yeah you know? it all depends and the thing is this is it like for me as far as video games and whatever um at least now i think i found a decent balance because i'm not doing it every day hmm. i will go like a week or whatever not touching anything hmm. and then like when i do have a day off or something and i've got a few hours i'll be like okay hmm. I haven't played anything in a while. Let me just do that. And that's what I think that's the best thing to say to him because, you know, you can't, it does become a habit where you're doing stuff, stuff like that. You can't, it might not just be video games. It could be your social media. Personally, I find it strange that social media is mentioned because it, I don't feel like social media. It's should, not an activity per se. Yeah. It's it? not a big, like, cause let me reread it. And no offense to the brother at all. I just want to reread it. Uh, I like to play video games and be on social media. But lately, yeah, but life. what does that mean? Like, I, I suppose when I got married, I really sort of compare Aki Tweet to old Aki Tweet. I am hardly <laughs> on anything, you know. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I really don't get do much online and that anymore as much as I used to. Um, and especially with this new line of work, because before I used to be on my phone, I used to be able, due, because of my job, I used yeah. to be able to be on my phone all the time. 
Yeah. And I used to do that just to pass the time. Yeah. Now it's a bit, it's a lot less, and mm. you know I've got to be a lot more alert on what I'm doing. So you've so, got to adapt, basically. Yeah, you've got to adapt. It depends on your lifestyle. As far as being on social media... And, and sorry, let me flip this. It works both ways. I mean, the brother is saying that, but his wife might... I don't, I'm not assuming about his wife, but like I, my wife, sometimes I feel like she's on social media too much. And I'll tell her, put, put your phone away, because mm. it's irritating. <laughs> but mm. it is... I mean, and it happens a lot, and it, it is this, this generation. And actually, Mr. AT, mm. I think it deserves... At next episode, I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it, bro. I'm gonna pull yeah. out the marriage episode, the one that everybody's been waiting for. What is it? This is episode nine. So next episode will be episode ten, the big one o, double digits. Yeah, got to make it special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, potentially. <laughs> potentially, I mean, it's avoiding the marriage talk. <laughs> I was, I was avoiding it. I was delaying it, not avoiding it. But anyway, well, you delayed um, it. You delayed yeah. it long enough. Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, the, basically the brother is saying, how do I, uh, I have, uh, the question I have is how do you manage free time to yourself and time for your wife? That's basically the crux of the matter. His wife is not in the best of moods because he's not spending time with her, right? And I would stick to my suggestion is like, spend maximum one hour for yourself, your you time, yeah? And not to mention, if you go to work, you kind of have your own time at work anyway, right? Right? And then the rest of the time, you're going to do stuff with her. Also, why don't you play video games with her if she's into that? Yeah, I do, actually. I do play with my wife. Oh, I keep thinking this is about me because I'm suffering from the same problem. (laughs) (laughs) No. The thing is, I mean, you are really, and no praise to you, like, I don't want to big your head up, but you are very in control of what well, I believe anyway compared to me in control of that aspect of your life and time and stuff and you don't like to waste it you know whilst I'm still in a position where I don't mind wasting some time which is bad I'm not saying it's good bro I waste time yeah but I choose when exactly I'm going to waste it and what I'm going to waste it doing but I feel like even the time that you waste you're still being productive <laughs> I do yeah. that's but my I mean, assumption bro, like, of think of it, but if you didn't think video games was productive like why would you do it because it's fun. Yeah, so that's so maybe it's it is productive. Bro, can you hear the Iqama? Okay. Achi. I'm going to run to the masjid. Now. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, yes. I would say it's a very good episode. <laughs> okay. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum.